All right, so for a problem like this, if you can understand an equation that looks something like this, then you can go ahead and solve a problem that looks like that. So let's go and focus on this one first. Let me show you how to approach a problem like this, and therefore we'll use that understanding to apply it to something like this, though it's way more confusing, even though you know how to do this, or at least we're gonna make sure you know how to do this. So in this case, we need to solve for x. And what we need to do when we're solving for x is identify what operations are being applied to our variable x. So first of all, we're being multiplied by a negative two. And then here, we're actually adding a three. Now, a lot of times students will be like, why are you adding? Well, that's a positive three, right? So you actually are adding it. Now, if you don't like the way that's written, you can go ahead and rearrange the equation to a negative two x plus three, right? You're not gonna write minus three, that's a positive three. So you're gonna write plus three. So hopefully now you can say, oh yeah, you are adding the three to the negative two x. So now we're just gonna use our inverse operations, right? Using the properties of equality to solve for x. So we always wanna undo addition and subtraction first. And once we undo addition and subtraction first on the property um, on uh, both sides, now we gotta look at undoing a multiplication and division. You can see now my x is being multiplied by a negative two. So the inverse operation of multiplication is going to be division. Therefore I have a negative one is equal to x and I can just flip around if I wanna read it as x equals a negative one. Okay, this whole process is exactly what we're gonna do here. So in this case, we have an a. Now this a is wedged in between a one half and a t squared. But guess what guys? that really doesn't matter, right? Just like you have a three times two is the same thing as a two times three. So we can rearrange this problem any way that we want to, all right? Because again, we want to solve for the a. So just like how we always like to write numbers in front of the x, right? Whatever variable you're trying to solve for, put that over at the end. Then the other thing is, this is a positive vt, right? Just like that's a positive three. But a lot of times students don't like looking at it like a three, they wanna rewrite it this way. So what I'm simply gonna do is just rewrite this equation for my variable that I'm solving is not gonna be nested in between two variables and I'm gonna put it at the very end. And then also I'm gonna rewrite the VT as a positive or a plus VT. Okay, so now again, we still need to solve for A. Now, a lot of times when I'm teaching literal equations, I tell students like to put a box around your A or you can underline it. There's a lot of different things we need to do. But again, or a lot of different things we can do to like identify what the variable we're trying to solve for. Because you can see here, when you're dealing with the literal equation, you have a lot of variables. So sometimes it's helpful just to like put a square around it just to remind yourself like, oh yeah, I'm solving for A. All right, then we ask our question. What operations are being applied to our A? Well, it's being multiplied by one half T squared and it's being added to by VT. So just like we did over here, we undo addition and subtraction first. So therefore I'm going to subtract a VT on both sides. Now, over here, I could do five minus three, that gave me two. We like that, right? It gave us a number. And now you're like, oh, why do we have all these variables in, you know, in math? We can't do that. We don't know the value of t, we, d, we don't know the value of v and t, so therefore, I'm just gonna be left with a d minus a v t. All right, I'll put that nice little box there around there again. And now we just need to say, all right, now what is being applied to my a? Well, now we have our multiplication. And again, what do we do with our multiplication? We use the inverse operation, we divide. Right? So we're going to undo multiplication of one half and t squared by dividing by one half t squared. Now, one thing that's a little bit important if I want to simplify this, if I took the number, let's say five, and divided it by one half, I could actually rewrite that by multiplying by the reciprocal, and that's gonna equal as a 10. So dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by a two. Now these t's could divide out, right? But then you, but you still have to make sure you divide this t into both of these terms. So I would caution you against trying to like divide this out. I would rather leave this as a rational expression, um, but you can go ahead and simplify this now to rewrite this as a, um, I'd read this as a two D minus VT all over AT squared is now going to equal to A. And again, there's many other ways you could simplify this. You could divide the T squared into both those terms. You could distribute the two T if you want to. It all depends on what your teacher asked for or how you're being instructed. But hopefully this video makes sense for you. It gave you some value. And if it did, I know you're gonna love the next video I have for you here.